In addition to sending and receiving emails in Outlook, you can also keep track of contacts, or in other words, those people who you correspond with. And you don't have to be corresponding with anybody to keep track of their information, like their first name, last name, birthday, email address, social security number, credit card information. To be able to store that information in Outlook, down below in the navigation pane, you've got your contacts, the two dudes. And when you hover over it, you get the hover peak, as we talked about in an earlier training video, that if you have any favorites, you can go ahead and quickly access that contact in a single click. In any case, I'm just going to come down below and click on the two dudes. Updates the folder pane, and you get your contacts folder. Well, I have an additional folder that I created. But let's stick with the default here, the contacts folder, with it selected. Over to the right, you can see that I already have contacts that I added, including me. And I want to show you how you can create or add contacts to your contacts folder. But before I do, notice up here on the Home tab in the Current View group, People is highlighted, so you're in the People view. It's a very simplistic view, at least the main view. You just get a picture and their name. And then when you double-click on them, you get a very simplistic screen. In other words, you don't get all the details that are available in another screen that I'm going to show you in just a minute. You get their basic contact information, like you know, email address, phone number, company, street address, and you can make changes, click Save or click Cancel, and it solidifies. So you can just look at it without worrying about changing anything. And then Notes, and if you're good, go ahead and click on Close. As opposed to coming up here, clicking on the More button, and choosing any one of these others, like the Business Card. Updates the view down below. You get a little business card with the basic information. So if you just need to quickly glance at somebody and go, oh, there's their work. Let me go ahead and give them a call. Boop, 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 and then call them. Now, if you want more information, of course, double click. And hey, look at that. You get a bigger window with more details. So as opposed to the people view, when you double click on the contact there, you don't get as much information. And so that, let me close out of here, is different from, well, the people view when you double click, different from the business card the card, the phone, and the list. In fact, all these four are the same. Well, not when it comes to the main viewing area down below, but they're all the same that when you change it and you double click on it, it opens up the same window. Well, with the same fields. Let me go ahead and close out. So I'm going to go ahead and click on more and go back to business card because I think that's fancy. And let's go ahead and add a new contact by coming up here on the home tab in the new group and click on new contact and it opens up the detailed window, which by the way, if you're in the people view and you click on create new contact, it's gonna open up this window as well. So don't worry about that. You'll be able to have the detailed view here. So let's go ahead and type in, well, up at the top, their full name, and it's gonna be Captain Peacock, hit the tab key, and then when I hit the tab key, it adds it over to this virtual business card, as well as down below is how you wanna file this. So when I save and close this, and I go back to the main view, do I want it last name comma first, or click on the drop down arrow, do I want it the way it's displayed up above, to be listed as Captain Peacock, first name last, with no comma. I'll leave it as last name comma first. And then if you want to get more particular, like if they have a title, you can click on the full name button, and there you go, add a title, and maybe his first name isn't Captain, maybe that's the title. Add a middle initial, and then a suffix, like if he's captain number two or three or junior or senior. In any case, I'll just add the middle initial and click OK. Updates it. And then down below, it's last name, comma, first, then middle initial. Or you can just go ahead and change it to the way you see it up here. Captain S.P. Cock. Let me click off. And then the name of the company, Dream Force. He works for us. We like captains. In any case, hit the tab key and then the title. He's VP. And then down below, his email address, Captain Peacock or CP at dreamforce.us, hit the tab key. And then that's how it's going to be displayed when I get an email from him. It's going to display his, as you see it up above, the full name, Captain S. Peacock, right there. So when it comes in, I don't look at this and go, okay, who's CP at dreamforce.us? Well, after a while, I'll get used to knowing who that is, but automatically, it'll show that, the name, when I get an email from him. Now, up here, you can click on the email button and go out into the address book if you have additional contact folders like I do and browse and peruse for other contacts to be able to add their email address from that into here, if you'd like. Otherwise, I just type it in. And you also get a drop-down arrow, which means you can have additional email addresses. So if I go to email 2, go ahead and type in a second email address. Maybe it's his personal email address and then, well, up to 3. But the problem I run into is that when I leave it here, 
I don't really look at this field a whole lot. I just go, oh, I don't have his email address. And then I type it in again when I just have to pay attention here. Email to, oh, is there a one? Well, no, but just a plain email here. And there you go. And then the web page address, www.dreamforce.us. Hit the tab key. And so when you hover over it and you click on it, it will take you to, hey, our web page, dreamforce.us. Come check us out. Buy some DVDs or downloads. Let's go ahead and close out. And then if you got an instant message address, go ahead and type it in there. A phone number, 801-555-525. I'm just making it up. And then hit the tab key. Now you also get the option to click on the button if you want to get more particular, like with the country region. Does it begin with one? You can see up above, plus one, the area code, and then the number. And it's broken down by city or the area code, then the local number. And if you have an extension like 225, you can see up above X, 225, click OK. It updates it as you see it here. Or you don't have to click on it. You can type it as is. You can type in plus one, space, open, parentheses, 801, and so on. And then add an X and then type in the extension here. So if I go ahead and delete this and do that, hit the tab key, click on the button again. It updates it down below in the extension field. So this is to help you target the fields within the main field here, as you saw up here in the full name, when you want to add a middle initial. So click on those buttons for extra details if you need some help. Let me click OK. And then you got the home phone number. You can type that in, the business facts. Also click on the buttons. You also have additional options when you click on the drop-down arrow next to it. So we have a business phone number, just like an email. You can also have a second email, or in this case, a second business phone number, number two. And then just keep that in mind, because if you're like, oh, I don't have their business phone number, well, make sure that it doesn't say two, that you click on it and go back to the default here, business, and there you go. And then add their mobile, and again, you can click on the drop-down arrows and get additional fields if you want to go ahead and use that, like their pager number, other. Let me go ahead and click off. And then down below, their street address. Now, you can go ahead and type in their address, or you can click on the button here, and get particular by typing in the street, then the city, then the state, zip, and country. Let me click cancel. If you want to do it quickly and not have to click on that button, you can go ahead and type in 101. And so I type in the street address in the first line, and then down below the city, state, and zip code, just like you do when you're printing off labels, where the street address is on one, city, state, and zip is on another. And then notice when I come over here and click on the business, how it automatically picked it out and said, oh yeah, this is the street because that's the first line. And then the city before the comma breaks it up for us. Fabulous. And of course, if you're not in America, choose something else. Let me click off of that and click OK. You can also map it. You can view a map of this area and see what their business looks like. Click on it. And it zooms right in. There's a picture of it, street side, and it pinpoints it right there. Oh, that's fun. In any case, let me go ahead and close out. And then over here in the notes, you can type in whatever you want. But for me, to keep my notes organized, when I talk to somebody or I have comment or statement, anything that I want to make, it's like a journal. At least for me it is. I go ahead and type in today's date. And you can see you get the auto text feature. So if it's today's date, it just says hit enter and I'll finish typing in the rest. And then the time. And then I do double dash. And I go ahead and type in whatever thought or comment or conversation we had at that time. Captain Peacock wants to go sailing this weekend and wants to know if I and my family would like to join him. And what I like to do also is to select the date and time and make it bold to kind of offset it here. And I'm not really a fan of Comic Sans. Let me go ahead and select that and come up here. Let me type in Arial, hit enter. I could leave it big, or let's do uh, size 10. So that way I can really tell the difference between what's bold and the actual note next to the date and time, that is. Which brings up a good point. We talked about this in an earlier training video, that if you want to be able to create email messages in a different type of font than the default font, you want the default font to be something else, you can watch my training video on that. But in short, come up here, click on the File tab, go backstage down to Options, Select the Mail tab, and then come down and click on Stationery and Fonts. And there you go, it's in Comic Sans. So all new email messages, it's just not email messages, but it's also my contact notes. So if I click on Font, 
and I go ahead and I type in Aereo. Well, there you go. Let me select it and we'll make it size 10. Click OK. Click OK. Click OK. So any new email messages that I create or when I create a new contact, it'll be in that font, not the Comic Sans, but in Arial size 10 as you see it here. So I don't have to, well, after I type, select it and change it to Arial size 10. In any case, you can watch my training video on that. And then finally, in addition to that, I'll set a reminder, let's say tomorrow, March 1st, 18, to follow up with them. And how I can set the reminder is on the contact tab over in the tags group. You can do follow ups. That's right. Click on it and you can add a reminder. And so that will be tomorrow, March 1st, to follow up and also get a pop-up when I have Outlook open, of course. We talked about this in an earlier training video when it came to messages, how we can flag our messages and get pop-up reminders to either follow up or call them, arrange a meeting, send an email. And I could say, well, I'll send an email to reply that, hey, yeah, we're going to come, and then click OK. I'm not going to do that. So when I click OK, tomorrow at 4 p.m., I better make it, if I was going to save it, I would do it early in the morning so I can go home, talk to my family, and say, hey, is this okay? Can we all make it this weekend? And get back to him as soon as possible so he's not waiting too long because, wow, after that, it's Friday. That's the weekend. In any case, go ahead and click OK. You can see up here the information bar, the reminder, send an email, starts tomorrow, and it's due tomorrow. And you got the reminder to pop up when I open up Outlook. And if I don't open up Outlook right at 8 a.m., that's okay when I open it up at 8.30. When I open it up, the pop-up will come up until I dismiss it, as we talked about in an earlier training video. And all I have to do is be sure to save and close. Let me go ahead and click on follow-up, and let's just clear the flag. But you can do that to contacts as well. And let me come back up here. I guess I better state that it was to email. And then once that reminder pops up and I email in the decision, I can come back in here and then just initial it that I followed through with that reminder. In any case, that's proprietary. That's what I do when I want to be really specific and working with people and following them up makes it look like I'm a genius when Outlook is the brain here or the notes in my contact here. And then when I have another correspondence with them, I can come up here, hit enter a couple of times, and then type in the new date, like if it was there at 4... Well, you get the idea. So I've got the latest date that I corresponded with them up at the top and everything else gets pushed down. So I come up here after I'm done with that. I set a reminder. I initial it. Hit enter. So I got this ongoing track record, which has been very helpful when it comes to certain companies that I've been working with, finding out uh, when things are going to be done, completed. And I can say, look, on this date, I talked to so-and-so who said it would be this day. Then I followed up the next day. I mean, when you sound like you know what you're talking about and doing, let's just go ahead and click and drag to delete it and we'll just keep it simple there then oh hey you get a picture add a contact picture click on it browse through your computer to find a picture let's go ahead and take a look at some sample pictures double click and oh there's captain koala let's go ahead and double click and add him there oh he was always a koala to me a steady tree climber yep that was my captain in any case you can see a sample of the electronic business card which we'll talk about later how you can edit it and also send it out in your email messages and then back up here on the contact tab into the tags group, we talked about the follow-up. You can also add a category to categorize your contact. Click on the drop-down arrow. So if he's one of our apple pickers or if he's part of the ghost hunting group or in charge of happy events or a combination of any or all of them, we can go ahead and say, well, he's part of the ghost hunting team. And we'll go over that in a more detailed training video about these categories and how you can group them into the categories. And let me right-click on it to clear the ghost hunting and when I'm done click save and close and where is he well he's down here just look for the picture oh there's captain and then double click update it with any additional changes you need and then when you're done again be sure to save your work and if for some reason you want to delete the contact well you can do it with the right click delete them you can also with it selected hit the delete key on the keyboard come up here on the home tab and then the delete group Hit delete, or you can double click to open it back up. And up there on the home tab, there's also an X. X marks the spot to delete your contact. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.